word. All right. And again, uh, once I start sharing, uh, it usually like takes over your computer, but if you're still trying to figure stuff out on your computer as far as downloading and stuff like that, totally fine. Uh, if you just click the escape button uh, once or twice, depending on if you have a Mac or a PC, um, it'll just minimize the window so you don't have to stare at the slides that I'm sharing with you. You can also do something else if you need to. Um, so again, if you're just kind of still in the midst of downloading or whatever, that is an option. Um, but either way, thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, we're going to talk about getting started with laser cutting. Uh, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, the laser cutter that we have at the in the makerspace and then how to design for it. I will say that our makers or our uh, laser cutter is not the same as other laser cutters. It was kind of specifically designed to be uh, an easy entry point for people who have never done laser cutting before. Uh, we're also going to be using a business card as just an example um, to show what you can do with the laser cutter, but obviously the possibilities are endless. So even though we're just using this, this business card as a um, just kind of a test example product, you can kind of think of anything that uh, you would want to do on a laser cutter and kind of adapt it to it. So, you know, making a sign or cutting a box or something like that. There's just tons of stuff. Uh, so the first thing is, uh, what is laser cutting? This video that we have right here is actually one of my coworkers and he is etching um, an image into his MacBook, uh, which you can do on our Glowforge, uh, which is pretty cool. So laser cutting does both cutting and etching, and it does this through a, a program where it kind of tells the laser the depth that it should go uh, according to a bunch of different factors that luckily you guys don't have to figure out, the program does for you. Um, and it can cut and etch onto various types of materials. So the most common are wood and acrylic plastic. Um, so wood ends up being really, really nice looking if you're doing etching and stuff and the plastic ends up giving really great cuts and making it look very, um, you know, clean cut and sleek, that kind of thing. Uh, but there are other options too. You can, la you can actually laser cut paper. Um, you can laser etch on leather. Uh, I will tell you that I have used our, uh, Glowforge to etch on leather. We etched somebody's wallet and um, it turned out looking really, really nice, but it's, you know, the leather smelled for a very long time. <laughs> um, so kind of keep that in mind. Uh, but there are a number of different materials that you can both etch and cut into. And depending on uh, what you're trying to do, the Glowforge, as I said, is a hobby level computer or, or a hobby level laser cutter. So it's not going to have as many customization options as say an epilogue zing which is available in the college of um or i guess in katherine harper hall it services a lot of the industrial design people uh, but our laser cutter again was kind of designed to be easy for people who have never used a laser cutter before um, some people who kind of just want to experiment and or prototype or whatever um, it's very, very simplistic, very fun to use, and uh, you can kind of get started with it very easily. What, at the end of this uh, sort of workshop, you'll see that the protocol for getting something laser cut is just to bring in your material and then also bring in your files and then my student workers or myself, um, we will cut it for you um, and then get it done. Similar to 3D printing, laser cutting is not as easy as, you know, like using an inkjet printer. However, it is significantly faster than 3D printing because it's, again, just kind of a series of cuts, especially if it is just cutting. The etching, uh, depending on the detail, tends to take longer, um, but produces really great results. Um, so, Getting a design. Uh, as if you've attended a 3D printing workshop, uh, there are multiple ways that you can get a design. You don't necessarily have to come up with it yourself. Again, we're going to do that today just so you can kind of see what you can do. 
Um, but there are lots of other different things you can do as well. Um, so one of the first things is finding and engraving an image. So the Glowforge etches things and engraves things really nicely. These are just a couple of examples of things that we've done on wood. Again, wood tends to show up um, a little bit better than something like acrylic wood. And that's just because you can see sort of the gradient a lot better. Um, but basically you can take pictures, like this is a picture of my coworker and this is a picture of my old dog. And uh, basically you can upload them and the laser cutter can etch them. So for this, we made a coaster. So if I wanted to set a you know, cup or something on Carl's face, I could. And this right here is a keychain. So you can see where we cut the hole, but we etched the image and then cut it out a little bit. So those are um, obviously fairly easy things to do because you're only doing two things. You've got the image and then you have the outline or the area you're gonna cut. Um, and again, we'll talk about that in a little while. Uh, but if you don't have a picture that you want um, right away, there are tons of options for getting pictures. So I've listed a couple here where you can get Creative Commons based imaging. And so essentially for those of you that don't know what that means is you can download any of these images and you can rework them or you can use them, um, but you can't, uh, but you have to attribute it to the original author if you're trying to, you know, put it online or something like that. And then something, not to get too into the nitty gritty of it, but some of them you're able to replicate and then sell and some of them aren't, it just kind of depends. So you'll have to kind of um, be cognizant of that as you are looking at different images. Um, but Flickr is a very popular one, Wikimedia Commons, and then Google Images. You can actually narrow a Google search to only search for images that are, um, done through Creative Commons licensing. So if I wanted to do a puppy again, let me some puppies. Um, basically, you can go over here to the tools section. Um, you hit that and it'll bring down this extra menu here. As you can see, I have this already pre-labeled, but when you typically do a Google image search, it'll look like this and it'll give you every picture of puppy under the sun. But when you use your tools and then you go under usage rights, you can actually go and modify it for whatever you're wanting to do. So if you wanna reuse and then modify it, then you can, if you wanna reuse, but you know, not do anything, um, whatever. So I'm gonna do reuse with modification. Um, actually, I'm gonna do labeled for non-commercial reuse with modification. And as you can see, we have different puppies now, different puppies showed up. Um, but essentially these are all images that people have put online that are um, free under a Creative Commons license or some similar license. Um, and again, Google kind of does the work for you and will filter some of that out. Um, so I am going to get, let's see, which one of these do I want? They're all so cute, very hard to decide. I'm gonna go with this one. It's very cute. All right, so I'm just gonna save this right quick. Save image as, yeah, that works. Um, put it on desktop. All right. Okay, but there are also other ones available that you can use, again, Flickr. Um, very popular one. You can see the Creative Commons stuff. And then Flickr actually explains to you some of what I talked about earlier um, because there are different Creative Commons licenses. Um, but basically, all of them have this attribution. Um, but some of them say that you can't use it to resell. Some of them say that you can't modify it. Stuff like that. So things to keep in mind. Um, and then again, there's Wikimedia Commons, which is also a really big popular one. Uh, tons of things on here. So lots of stuff. And one of the things, things about Wikimedia Commons that I like is that it typically has um, government resources as well, which is kind of cool. Um, and you can see right here that they have over 61 million free reusable media files. And you can just go up here and search again. 
like puppy or something and it'll have all of these different things that they have available. So it just sort of depends on what you're wanting to do. Okay. Um, so a little something about actually creating something. Basically, you can have other images that you etch, but you also need, can create your own images and lines to cut. And you can do that through any sort of vector file program. Um, so the two I have listed here are Adobe Illustrator, which is the one we're going to use today. And the reason why I like to use this one is even though it's got a little bit of a learning curve if you've never used it before. We're only going to go over a couple of tools, so hopefully it won't be too overwhelming. Um, it is the highest quality program out there. There's a reason why Adobe gets all the credit, and it's because they have a really great product. Um, but that being said, there is also Inkscape, which is really good for vector projects too. And the good thing about Inkscape is that it is an open source program, so it's free. Uh, you just download it, and it also has a cool feature where you can designate paths, which can sometimes be better when you're using a more advanced laser cutter. You don't really need to use it for the Glowforge, um, but if you were trying to do something more complex, Inkscape has kind of a built-in option to help you with that too, which is great for a free program. Um, so again, those are kind of the two that I would suggest. I'm sure there are many of other programs out there. You could even probably do something in um, MS Paint, although I think they got rid of that, sadly. But, um, you know, you get what I'm saying. Any sort of program that has a drawing element to it, you should be able to download certain things from it. But we are going to focus on Illustrator. So hopefully by this time, as I've been gabbing, uh, you guys have been able to download Illustrator. Um, if not, feel free to follow along. Um, that's totally fine too. Um, so we are going to make a business card. So if you guys would open up Adobe Illustrator um, and then- Anna, can I ask you a question? Sure. I mean, I have Creative Suite and I, ha I use InDesign, but I, I can't get Illustrator to be downloaded for some reason. Uh, like, uh, do you have the Adobe um, Creative Cloud uh -huh. app or whatever? Like, uh, are you using a Mac? Yes. Okay, so it should look like this up here. Do you see where my mouse is up at the top? Um, yeah, uh-huh. Okay, so does it have that little, um, looks like an, a weird lopsided infinity sign? Yeah. Okay, so if you click on that, that is the um, shortcut to that app. Uh, sorry, it's just coming up with a blank screen. It doesn't do this. Nope. <laughs> Weird. Um, so when you click on it, it should come up with this menu where you can go to um, Illustrator and then, you know, update it or download it or whatever. Okay. Um, I, mean, I have the rest of the suite. I mean, don't worry about me, but I, I can't get it uploaded for some reason. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I'm not totally sure why that's happening. It might be one of those things where you would have to um, like un uninstall and then reinstall, but okay. Um, okay. but I'm not totally sure. Uh, that's but you'll share this with us later, right? Yes. Yes, yes. I've got the other recording from last week, and I'm just going to, um, after this one's over, I'm going to upload both of them um, within the next week or so and figure out um, kind of how we're doing that as a library um, as far as like filing systems and stuff. And, like, okay, I'll follow along and I'll catch up later. Yeah, I'll definitely send you an email um, with, with the link once it's, it's all nice and uploaded. Um, okay, so you could, should see something like this once, once uh, Illustrator is downloaded and kind of ready to go. Um, so they have a couple of quick options here, or you can go to create new or whatever. Um, so what we're going to do is we are going to go to create new. Um, and then we're going to head over to the print icon up here. Uh, you can see that there are a bunch of different types of documents, and these are just full of templates um, that they have available. So this one is letter, uh, which has the letter size. Uh, for some reason, you'll see this, uh, it defaults to points, uh, but you can go over here to the drop down menu and click to inches if that's um, kind of your more familiar sort of deal. 
and you can see how it's got the typical letter size of eight and a half by 11 inches. Uh, the orientation is portrait mode, as you can see. Uh, but what we're going to do, well, actually, depending on which type of business card you want to make, you can keep it portrait mode if that's the orientation you want your business card to be. Um, or you can go to landscape over here. Um, it's kind of up to you. Uh, so the next thing we'll do is just go and make the business card a typical business card size, which is two inches by three and a half inches. And again, it doesn't matter which orientation it is. If you want to actually cut this card at the end, that's totally cool and you can. Um, but don't feel any pressure to have to do that. So if you want to just play around with it, you don't have to stay with the um, with the dimensions that I have. Um, these are it's just what the typical uh, business card dimensions are. So that's three and a half and two. Uh, so I'm also going to just title this um, biz card example. Uh, you don't, again, you don't have to title it either. I just like to do that. Um, but definitely make sure that you're, um, if this is in inches or some other measurements that you are familiar with. And then make sure that these are the correct measurements before you click create. But once you have all that, click create. And it'll open this up. So as you can see, um, even though it looks really big, I promise this is actually only two by three and a half inches. So this one's a little bit harder to do just because there's lots of like zoom windows and stuff. So I'm trying to orient those, move them down so I can get to all my stuff. Uh, okay. So I'm not totally sure what your um, workspace looks like. Sometimes it looks different depending on who's doing it and if it's your first time opening the program and all that stuff. Um, so what I mean by that is sometimes this will be, in, all these tools on the side here will be in one long line. Sometimes they'll be doubled up like this. Uh, some of you probably have extra uh, windows and stuff over here. That's totally fine. That's totally good. Um, see, it might end up looking, this might be what yours looks like or something similar to that. Um, again, any of that's fine. It does not really matter. Um, what I found is that uh, you kind of go through and you end up finding the workflow that works best for you in a program like this because there are so many different options to choose from. So for instance, um, if I have my little tools over here that I like up, um, I might not need gradient or stroke, so I get rid of those or whatever, but I have other panels that I use more often. So the whole core of it is don't worry about it. Um, I will show you the tools that we're going to use for this. Um, so the first thing is we are going to go, um, I'm pretty sure we're going to do the layers panel first. Let me just double check. There. Yeah, okay. So the first thing we're going to do is actually create the outline of this business card. Um, so I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. And the way that you do that is there's a little magnifying glass over on this corner or on the side here. The magnifying glass is the zoom. Um, so you can double click on it and it'll zoom out. Um, you can hold it down and it should be the plus sign means it's going to zoom in. Uh, if it's a negative in there, then it's going to zoom out, but the automatic is the plus sign. So if you want to kind of see your entire uh, like work plane object right here, then just double click on this uh, magnifying glass and then you can click, do single clicks and make this as big or small as you want. So I'm just going to click this twice so it looks like that. But again, it's up to what you, um, wh how you work. I know this is a complicated program, so I'm gonna try to make it simplistic, but there are so many ins and outs that there's no way that any of you are going to get a super uh, good grasp of it in the time that we have today. Um, but just so long as you can see a couple of the core functions, it should be okay 
to get the kind of principle across. So if you wanted to use a less complicated program later, you could at least see what um, you need to do. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is, like I said, we're going to make um, the outline of the business card. So you're probably wondering, well, isn't just having this as you know the edges of the business card, doesn't that work as the outline? No, actually it doesn't. When you do laser cutting, it needs, the software needs to know where to cut and it needs to know where to edge. And so part of that is actually creating these outlines so that the laser cutter knows which path to follow. So it does not automatically understand that even though this is two and a, or two by three and a half inches, that that's where you should cut. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back over to the side panel and we're gonna go down to the rectangle tool. Uh, you can see as you hover over each of these cool tools, it'll tell you what it is, uh, but obviously the rectangle tool is just the one that's got the rectangle shape on it. So if you click that, we have a couple of options here. You can either start here and drag it out, um, or you can be a little bit more precise and you can click, just click anywhere and it'll pop up this lovely uh, little box right here that says rectangle. And you can do the exact same thing that you did when we were actually creating the template for this business card and just put in three and a half by two inches or however, big your, you made yours, doesn't really matter. Um, but just make sure that it's a big enough to where it goes around the entire business card. So I have three and a half by two in here, so I'm gonna click OK. And then there's my little box. Uh, you can see that it offsets it, and that's just so that you can um, align it where you want to. And the way that you do that is you just go up to the very first tool on this little panel, the black arrow, and you click that and then you can move this around. That's your selection tool. So again, what I did was I just went down to the rectangle tool here, selected that. I clicked anywhere on here once and then it came up with this lovely box where you can put in the dimensions and then it will create the object for you. So I'm gonna head back over to the selection tool, the black arrow up here. Um, as you can see, you can the black outline is now around the edge of our business card. Uh, however, it's not selected. So if I wanna select it, I hover over and click it, and then you can tell it's selected because uh, it has all these lovely white boxes all around it. And here is where you can customize a little bit if you would like. So this is just a regular rectangle, obviously, but you'll see that it has a little blue dot up in the corners of here. Um, and when you hover over it, it has a little arc next to the black um, of your clicker. So if you wanted to make rounded corners, you can just pull on, click and pull on that blue dot and make them as rounded as you want. So I'm just gonna make a small round there. Just, just for fun, just because I can. And then you can click off and you can see how it's the, the rounded corners. So again, that's just if you um, wanted to do that, absolutely no pressure. Um, but just the regular you know, rectangle is awesome too. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go up to the window panel I mentioned there are all these things on the side over here that may have popped up for you, um, but some windows don't pop up. So over here I have like swatches and color and gradient and whatever. I don't really need those right now, um, but what I do want to see is our layers panel. So you go up to window and then you scroll down and there's a little option that says layers. You can see all the other panels that are available. As you can see, there are tons of them. If there's a check mark next to it, it means it's already being displayed. So you can see how the gradient panel is in, on the side over here. Um, so if I unchecked it, it would make the gradient panel go away, uh, which is great. I don't really need it anyway. Um, but again, we're gonna go to window and then we're gonna go down to the layers panel. So I'm gonna click this layers panel. So a quick note about 
layers. Um, layers are really great because they allow you to keep your thoughts organized. Um, so if you're building a really complicated drawing or something like that, you can use the layers panel to make like one layer is, is say you're building um, like a human. You're, you're just doing a portrait of a human. The layers panel can help you put like maybe just the arms on one layer, just the legs on another layer. So you don't get too confused and you can kind of piece up what you're creating. Uh, for our purposes today, we are gonna do two different layers and we're gonna do one for what we're gonna etch and one for what we're gonna cut. So what we just did again was we made this outline of the business card here and that is going to be a path that we're going to cut. So the laser cutter is gonna know that that's the outline of the business card. Um, so I'm gonna go over here, I'm gonna double, I'm just gonna click on this layer here and I'm just going to rename it cut. That's it. You can also see how we only have the one layer here um, and it's got the blue right there. And that just means when I hover over this or click on it, it's blue and outline. This is another thing that Illustrator does to help keep things um, more organized. Um, so what I mean is if you go down to the corner of the layers panel here and you hover over the kind of set one next to the, the trash can, it says create new layer. So we're gonna create the new layer. And you can see that this one is red. Uh, again, that just kind of helps you keep your thoughts organized. So you know what is on which layer and things like that. It helps you make it a little bit easier. Um, if you're working on one layer, but you don't want to mess with anything in another layer, there's a little box right here where you can click it and it turns into a lock and then you can't do anything on that layer. Similarly, it's got these creepy little eyeballs right here where you can stop looking at what a layer is has on it if you want to just concentrate on one layer at a time. So we can go over here and click this eyeball and it makes the outline of our business card go away. Um, so th those are just a couple of components, but they're sort of important and I like to mention them. I'm going to also double click on here and rename this um, etch. Okay, so everything we're going to want to cut on our business card is going to be on the cut layer and you're going to want to make sure it's highlighted. And you'll be, again, you'll be able to tell that it's on the right layer because it'll be blue. Um, you can also uh, change the color if you want. Um, to a different color besides blue if you wanted to do that. If you double click on the, the uh, layer options, you can rename it and you can also make it a different color if you, know, you have certain things in your mind that make more sense. Um, but the blue and the red are sort of the um, defaults for the first and second layers regardless of when you use the program. So anyway, again, the colors don't matter except to help you organize your thoughts. Uh, so we have our cut layer and we have our etch layer. Again, if you need to make the second layer and you didn't see what I did the first time, all I did was go down to this icon right here that says create new layer and it just automatically will add it on top. Okay. All right. So now that we have our outline, uh, we also can add in things like lettering. Since this is a business card, uh, obviously you would want your name on it, maybe Appalachian State, maybe your you know, title, um, you know, and pretty much anything that you can think of. Um, but before you add in the lettering, it's sort of important to think to keep a couple of things in mind because just because when you are designing for 2D, there are different rules than when you're designing for laser cutting. Essentially, you have to think about things that you might not have to worry about if you're just printing off um, a picture or something like that. So what I mean is um, there are things about cutting these that can be kind of complicated. Essentially, you want to have bolder letters because the bolder letters allow for a more clean cut. If you use a font that is really thin and kind of cramped together, the laser cutter might not be able to achieve the effect, the effect that you're looking for. 
Um, so it's always good to use a bold letter or something strong, um, you know, pretty obvious. So down here, I have two examples. Um, I do not love this font by any means, the top one, um, but it, it's an example of a serif font. Serif means that it has these little, um, little accents on the letters. Um, so a serif font that's also thick uh, to where you could, you can still identify that that is my name. Um, and then we also have this one down here, which is a sans serif font, but it's also fairly plain. There's no like bells and whistles to it, but you can kind of see that it's very obviously my name. Um, so something you're probably wondering is why do they have these weird little tags on them? Well, that's because depending on if you want them cut or etched, you have to take that into account when you're creating your design. So you have to make tags because essentially, um, this is easier to illustrate in person, so I apologize, but essentially when you are creating your name or lettering or really any design for the laser cutter, if you know you're gonna be cutting that element out, uh, you have to keep in mind that there are little holes that are going to fall through. So for example, with my name right here, um, you have the little uh, hole in the A in Hannah. Um, so if we are laser cutting and all the black represents um, stuff that's laser cut and then it's not going to be there anymore, uh, that if you don't put this tag in right here, this little center of the A is going to fall through as well. So it's not going to be attached to anything. So essentially it would be like um, there was no, it would just be a weird kind of black space. You wouldn't have this little area here still existing. Like the little center in the middle of the O would not exist anymore. So what you have to do to kind of rectify that is you have to go in and add um, little tags. And it's not hard to do, but it is something to keep in mind. So I also have two different examples here, depending on how you want your uh, card to look. You can either do the straight cut, which is the top option. So uh, again, that just means that the insides of the letters are not going to be there anymore after you laser cut it. They will fall through. Um, but you can also go down here and do the negative space. So this is where the black is the part that is not going to be there anymore. So these, the letters of Hannah are still, you know, standing up. They're still going to be there. It's just going to have this weird kind of rectangle that's a back space that kind of gets rid of that. So it's sort of like, um, like letters sitting on the top of a windowsill or something. Um, but when, if you choose, oh, sorry. If you choose this option, uh, keep in mind that the, the letters do need to still rest on the actual um, like material that you're doing. So you want to make sure that they're still attached, like the tags, um, only to the bottom of the letters. Because if you put them, if you put the black um, all the way around, then these would be kind of floating in space and it would cut through and it wouldn't exist anymore, if that makes any sense. Again, it's much easier to explain in person when I can show you a physical example. Um, but again, you just kind of have to like work with me and hopefully you understand what I'm talking about. But again, you need to kind of have that anchor. So just kind of imagine that this white space here is your business card and the black space is what you cut away. And so this uh, white space still needs to be attached to the letters in order to maintain their shape or else they're gonna fall through. So you have these options. Again, if you don't want to cut out your, your letters of your name or anything, you don't have to, you can just etch them so they're a little bit darker. Um, that doesn't really matter as much. Then you don't have to go through the pain of adding the tags or anything. Um, but if you do want to add your name and do the tags, I'm going to show you how to do that right now. Okay, so click back over to Illustrator. So what you will see is, again, on this side panel of tools, there's also this lovely thing that's got a little letter T, and when you hover over it, it says Type Tool. Awesome. So click on that. Um, and then you'll see that uh, it has a little scroll box kind of thing. Your clicker turns into a little box. And um, all that means is basically just pull with your arrow, click and pull, 
and then it'll make a box with um, letters in it. Uh, this, this is kind of the default um, type that they put in it. It's kind of, it goes back to a long way of, of where basically it's a phrase that is kind of repeated over and over that is supposed to hold all the letters of the alphabet. So anyway, not important, just click the delete button and then type in what you want. So I'm gonna do my name. Um, I also would suggest for the name doing all capital letters uh, just because I think it ends up looking nicer, but that's just a personal preference that I have. So by all means, you don't need to do that if you don't want. Um, again, you just go over here to the type tool, you click on it, and you scroll to your canvas and you click and drag. It'll have the letters in there. You can delete or you can just start typing or whatever. Doesn't matter. You'll also kind of, if you want to move your um, type around, you have to go back up to that black arrow tool and move it. I'm going to get rid of this one, so I'm just going to select it and click delete. So this is also the default font, but you might want to have a different font than this, which is totally understandable. So we're going to do what we did before when we found the layers panel and we're going to go up to window. And we are going to scroll down to type. And you'll see that it has another little panel. Like I said, Illustrator has tons and tons of features and we are only hitting like skimming the surface of them. Uh, but we're going to select character. It should open up another panel here and you can move this panel wherever you want. So I'm just going to move it down here. Oops, kind of made its own. Sorry, this is one of the hazards of Zoom. Whenever I'll make this work. Whatever, I'll deal with it. Okay. Um, but what you can see is it has this thing called Myriad Pro. That is the natural font that it comes with. Um, if you want to change the font, you can double click on this. Again, you can have it as the selection and then double click and it'll switch back over to the T, the type tool, or you can just go back down to the type tool. And um, if you're on select, you can go to the type tool and just click in the box and it should let you highlight it. Um, so this Myriad Pro, if you hold down the arrow, you can see all of the different fonts that Illustrator has. It has an insane catalog of fonts already kind of put into the, um, the system, but you can always go and choose a different one if you want to. It's just sort of up to you, um, entirely up to you. So I'm going to select this one because it looks bold enough to where it would work and um, yeah, it's fine. I also want to make my name a little bit bigger than that. So if I want to do that, I can go over here to where it says 12 point and then make it bigger. If you scroll over it, it'll give you a preview. So I'm just going to go up to 14 there. But there are other things here too, if you want to be more specific, where you can like space out the letters and things like that. Um, but for the most part, most of it's um, too complicated than what you need. And you can just focus on the actual um, font and then the size here. Alternatively, uh, you might have a panel that comes up up at the top. Um, sometimes they'll have, depending on which tool you have selected over here, uh, the panel will kind of go as sort of a toolbar at the top. So you can see that you can also access it from up here. And again, that just kind of depends on which layout you're using. So if you don't have that, don't worry about it. It's totally fine. Okay, so I have hand poke. Um, so I know that this is what I want for my uh, name. And then I know that I want to cut that aspect of it out. Um, it's the size that I want, it's the font that I want. So that's great. Uh, and the reason that's important is because after we do this next step, we are not gonna be able to change what the font looks like, okay? So you're gonna wanna make sure that it's the size you want 
you're going to want to make sure it's the font you want before we go and do what we're doing next. All right, so we're going to look at that layers panel again. Um, and what we're going to do is um, I, I like to just kind of have it keep uh, I like to keep it up and have it available so that I can keep my thoughts organized, like I said. Uh, I'm going to zoom in just oops, zoom in just a little bit. Again, go to the little magnifying glass and just click. If you zoom in too far, again, you can just double click on the magnifying glass and it'll reset. Um, if you zoom in here and you want to uh, look at something else, you can hold down the space bar. Oops. Not a good idea when you're in the type mode. Um, but you can hold down the space bar if you're on the select uh, black arrow up here. And then you can actually kind of, it turns it into a little hand and you can move it around. So I'm going to do that there. Okay. So again, um, you have your font, you have your lettering size that you want. Uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to change this into uh, something that you can type and manipulate into shapes. So we're going to make each of these individual letters a shape. It sounds complicated, but it's not. All you have to do is make sure that you have the black arrow selected. Make sure you've got your sh um, little name selected. Then you're going to right click um, or control click. And then you're just going to do create outlines. Super easy. So again, what I did there was I made sure my black selection arrow was clicked, uh, made sure that the type that I wanted was highlighted. So clicked on here, then right click, create outlines. Uh, I'm going to zoom in just so you can kind of see what I did a little bit better. Um, but essentially what it did was it made paths around each of these letters. And as with the outline that we created for the business card itself, if you're going to laser cut something, you have to give it a path to follow. So if we had left it just as the type before, that would not have worked. It would have, um, it, it wouldn't have cut because essentially there were no paths in which to cut. Um, but since we created the outlines, we created the outlines, which are another word for a path. So each of these letters has the uh, path. Uh, you can see that they're still grouped together. So um, if your name, if you are a lucky person and your name does not have any of these lovely empty spaces, like I have five of them, but if you're lucky and don't have any, then congratulations. You don't need to do anything else. That's all you need in order to cut um, these letters out. And again, all the black space is what is gonna be cut away. Um, if you are unlucky, such as myself and many others, um, and you do have letters that have these empty spaces or these spaces um, on them, what you need to do is make sure you have it selected again and then just right click again. And instead of last time we did create outlines and this time we're gonna ungroup. And what ungrouping did was it made it so that I could touch each individual letter here. So you'll remember that I talked pretty extensively earlier about needing to create tags um, in order to uh, keep these parts of your letter here. They don't need to be very big. They just need to be uh, big enough to where it keeps it um, together. You can also incorporate it into the design in some aspects if you wanted to do that. Um, so it, say uh, an example of that would be like making a little tag that goes all the way through the O to where you know what it is, but you know, it still provides that structure and whatever. So I'll show that example in a second. Um, but again, the tags don't need to be super exciting. They can be pretty plain. They can be set in the middle. They can be whatever. Um, it's, it's entirely up to you, but we're going to go back and we're going to use that exact same rectangle tool that we used before. Um, we're going to click on that. And then you can just go and start making your tags, uh, by just dragging the rectangle out. 
Um, something you'll notice here is that when I click off of it, the default is a black outline and a white interior. Um, you can change that very easily. Just click on it and then go down here uh, to the bottom of your little tools panel over here. You'll see that it has the white and it has the black. Uh, so this is the border or called the stroke. Uh, so that's what this black outline is here. And then it has the white, which is the fill. Um, and so you have different options here. You can double click and change the color. Um, but what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna get rid of this stroke, this outline. So I'm gonna click this here uh, just to bring it to the front. So it's in front of the fill because that's the one we're, we're manipulating. And then I'm just going to click this little thing that has a red slash through it. That just means none. So fairly easy. And then it has the white panel here. And you can see what my little tag looks like. So again, um, when you have the default rectangle tool, um, it will have that black outline. And all you have to do to get rid of it is go down to where the colors are on this bo the bottom of this panel, click to make sure that the border stroke is on top, and then click none. And just like with the type and with the other elements, if you want to move these around, uh, you have to make sure the black selection tool is highlighted and you can move them. Uh, you can also use the arrow keys to move them. Um, you can also make it fatter or thinner, depending on what you want. So I'm going to make this one thin. There we go. Something like that. Okay. So you would need to do little tags like this for each of your letters that have this, um, this little hole to it. And once you get one, so say I like this A that I did, I have another A in my name, so okay. So what I'm going to do is instead of like going to the rectangle tool and making a whole new one, I can just actually go up to here to edit, copy, and then edit, paste, and then oh look, I have a whole nother one. So just going to move that into place. Nice. All right, I'm going to paste again. And then I'm going to, so sometimes when the objects are super small like this, you have to click off of it and then hover and click again, and then you can drag it. Um, that's just because we're working on a small scale. Um, so did that there, but that's why I'm doing that. All right. So I have all my little tags. Um, and once you have all your tags uh, kind of ready and in place, we kind of have to go back to that principle that we talked about earlier where you have to create the outlines. So we created the outlines for the, sh uh, for the shapes of the letters, um, but now you can see that it's got the outlines of the weird, um, it's got the path here for this weird tag. So what we have to do is we actually just have to merge these two shapes together which is not hard, but it does require going to get another panel. So we're going to go to window like we did before with, with the layers panel and like we did before with the character panel. Um, but for this one, we're going to go down to Pathfinder here. I don't know why it's called Pathfinder, um, but it is. But essentially, it helps you merge shapes. And that's what we're going to do. Uh, and the way that you do that is actually also not very hard. Um, uh, let's see. So I'm just going to click this. And then I'm going to hold down the shift button and click that as well. So you can see that I have the O and the little thing that I've made for the tag, the rectangle here, they're both highlighted. And then you go over here and I'm pretty sure it's the second one. Yes, it is, brilliant. Um, the second one is minus front. Um, if it wasn't the second one, so I'm gonna edit, uh, undo, subtract here. 
if it was like the first one merge or whatever unite um, it would have made it look weird but you can always go up to edit undo and no harm no foul so again it's for our purposes it's going to be the second one which is minus front and that essentially just cuts it out so what that did was again it kind of made one object where you can see if you zoom in you can see the path that goes around this half little o here and you have to do that for both of them so click that hold down shift click the second one and then click minus front click over to the other one minus front and you just want to do that for each of your shapes that has the little hole in it this uh, principle also works for if you are doing a design that you want cut out and it has like a circle element to it or something like that, you're going to need to factor that into your design to understand that if you put in a circle, unless you want it to fall completely out, um, you know, you should, you should make tags for it so that it, um, it retains its shape. Okay. So again, if you missed it the first time, we went to window and we just downloaded, or we opened up Pathfinder and it's this small panel here. And then again, you just kind of, you select and then you hold shift and you select the second part of your letter and then you choose minus front, the second shape mode here. So it's totally fine if you are not, or if you haven't done it as quickly as me, obviously I've had a boatload of practice. Um, and like I said, this, this business card is just an example. So you don't have to grasp everything right now. You don't have to, you know, do all that stuff. Um, so I'm going to go over to this, um, to the magnifying glass again. I'm going to do the double click and then I'm just going to click it uh, once. Well, yeah, do once. Uh, so I have all my letters. I have my outline. Great. Uh, I'm going to look at my layers panel again. The, that is the only thing I want to cut on this layers panel or, or um, on this business card. I want the outline of my business card cut and then I want my name cut out so that it looks like this on the business card. So I'm done with that. Completely done. So what I'm going to do just for um, organization's sake is I'm going to the layers panel and I'm going to click that little lock so that I can't manipulate any of the stuff on here. Then I'm going to switch over to the etching panel, which just means I'm going to click on it and you can tell because it's highlighted. And then that is where I'm going to go over to the text bo box again and I'll just put, you know, merging tech librarian. Okay, and again, you can make that smaller, whatever. Um, doesn't matter. This is gonna be etched, so that's all you need to do for that. You can put your name, you can put, I mean, you can put your um, contact info, you can put your title, you can put app, it doesn't matter. Um, that is all you need to do for that, is just have this thing, because what the, um, what the Glowforge will see is this as something to etch, and then it'll just be kind of dark. Since it's black, it'll just be, you know, a dark etching. So it's not gonna cut anything, but it still has the, the uh, letters available. Something else you might do, and we talked about this earlier, is add a photo. So I am just going to do, just going to add that puppy that I had, la that I downloaded earlier. So I'm gonna, you can either go to file open or you can do what I'm doing and add it this way. Oh, it's not gonna let me. Okay, never mind, that's fine. So you can go to file open and then select your puppy. Um, let's see, I think I had it on the desktop. All right, there we go, puppy, open. All right, so this opened in a different um, tab up here. You can literally just drag this over here and there's the puppy. 
Um, it's obviously humongous and that's fine. So I'm just gonna go up to this corner here and you can like kind of move it in and it'll change it. But if you want it to stay the same size, you wanna hold down shift as well and that'll keep the scale, keep the proportions correct. I got my little puppy. So again, this is on the etching panel. So it's gonna etch this image of a puppy. It's gonna etch the emerging technology librarian part. All right, I know we're getting to three o'clock, so I'm going to show you a little bit more and we're almost done anyway. All right, um, so what we just did or what I just showed you was placing a picture, um, but you can also do what I did in this example a while ago where I put the, uh, the image or of the logo that I have for the Inspire Maker Lab. Um, something you'll notice is that the logo is blue. And even though the laser cutter obviously does not do color or anything like that, what it does do is it determines how deep the etching is going to be um, based on what color it is, like the, the value of the color. So think about it as turning everything into grayscale. So if we change the image of the puppy into grayscale, that is what it would look like etched out. So this blue is going to be lighter, a lighter etch than the black lettering of the emerging technologies librarian or librarian or whatever. Um, so just kind of keep that in mind. But we've kind of covered everything that you need to know. We've shown you, uh, or I've shown you how to make the path and how to make the etchings. And again, it's like I said, very, very easy. Uh, but here's something that's kind of weird when it comes to doing uh, laser, the laser cutting with the Glowforge, is that uh, the reason I made two layers besides just to kind of help us keep our thoughts in order was also because one of the layers is going to be for etching and it's going to be, a, we're going to save it as a PNG or a JPEG. It doesn't matter which one. Um, it's really your preference. Uh, and then the other one is going to be saved for cutting, and that's going to be an SVG file. So you can design it on the same like sheet, like what we did. Um, but when you save it, you're going to want to save them as two separate files. I, honest to goodness, don't know why Glowforge designed it that way. It's kind of bizarre to me, but I think it was in the spirit of trying to keep things simple. So you have one file for etching, one file for cutting. And then uh, you can actually do both together on the Glowforge. Uh, you just kind of have to line them up appropriately, but you can do them both together. You just can't do etching and um, cutting in the same file and make it work because the Glowforge software is not uh, complicated enough to where it can allow you to differentiate different lines and things. So the way that it works is, again, you have one file for etching, one file for cutting. So that's, again, why we chose those layers. So you see here we have the cut layer and we have the etch layer. So um, I'm going to lock down the etch layer. I'm going to go over to the cut layer. Um, and all you have to do is highlight both of them. So you can see I have the blue highlighted here and the outline. I'm going to do that right click yet again. Um, but this time I am going to do X, collect for export as single asset. When you click on it, it comes up with a panel, asset export. And then you have a format down here. So it's already on SVG, which is great. That's what we need. Yours is probably not. So if you um, open up the panel here, you can just select SVG. Because again, uh, if you want to cut something, it needs to be an SVG format. So select that. And then you just click export. Uh, so this is prompting to stay and to be in my documents. So I'm going to click choose. And then I'll do replace. You can tell I've done this workshop on this computer before. <laughs> okay. And then that is all and it lists as asset one. Okay. And we're going to do the exact same thing with the etching. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to click on the little lock here. I'm going to unlock this layer, select the red, 
And then again, just click and select all of these. So you like drag and select, and you can see that it's got the puppy, it's got the emerging tech librarian. Okay, great. So as before, we're gonna right click or control click, go down to collect for export, and then do it as single asset. It'll have that panel again. You can see the one that we did before, asset one, and here's asset two. And since this is etching, again, it's gonna to need to be an image file. So PNG or JPEG, doesn't matter. PNG is at the top of my list. So that's the one I'm gonna select. And then you click export, click choose. All right, so there you go. So in Finder, I'm gonna to go to Finder right quick. Um, so it was under documents. Uh, what you'll see is it shows up as 1x. I don't really know why, but it does. Um, and then when you see it, um, here's asset one, asset two. Um, let's see. Huh. Well, I don't. So asset two saved. Asset one. Oh, that's never mind. Okay. Sorry, I'm thinking out loud. Um, one X is just for the PNGs. And then I think there is another, I don't know why it does this. Yes, here it is. There's the two, uh, folders. One is one X and that's where your PNG is going to be. As you can see, I have other ones that I've done. And then you can go down to SVG. It'll automatically create this folder and it'll be there. So you can see it there. So again, I'll show that to you again, because I know that that part's super confusing. Um, so again, you have the finder. Um, typically up at the top, it'll have one X and that's where your PNG will be. Um, so ours is asset to PNG. If this is your first time doing it, that'll be the only file in there. And then you have to go down to the SVG folder and it'll be in there. You can see I have a bunch of other things that I've, I've done. But yeah. Again, sorry, I know that's semi confusing, but it is the easiest way to save it. And you can always um, drag those files into another um, folder to kind of make it more easy, I guess, easier to organize in your mind. That is probably one of the more confusing aspects of this. So I do apologize, but But in the end, when you actually go to get this created, you will have this part that gets cut out, the outline. Um, and then you'll have these letters that get cut out. It'll look just like this. It'll just be minus whatever material you cut on. And then these will be etched. I don't think I can make it grayscale, but Again, um, it'll be grayscale. So if you turned it into black and white, uh, that's what the etching would essentially be since it doesn't have any color. Okay. So once you have your two files, um, all you have to do is set up an appointment with me or just go into the Inspire Maker Lab once we're open again because the laser cutter is down there. Um, please bring your own materials. Uh, that could be either wood or acrylic, or you could do like a cardstock. Cardstock would probably be good for if you want to actually pursue this um, business card as opposed to um, using these skills and then kind of applying them to a project you're actually really interested in. Um, but yeah, you could bring cardstock. You could bring like a, not a cardboard per se, but like a, um, I can't think of the word right now. It's not not like ply it's something else it's like a very very thin cardboard looking kind of thing but it's not cardboard per se uh, but you can bring those materials you could honestly bring cardboard too if you wanted um, you can laser cut cardboard um, but if you're cutting something it needs to be a fourth of an inch or less in width and that is one of the um one of the limitations of our machine since it is a hobby level machine is that it does not allow for really deep cuts. Uh, 
a fourth of an inch is not super thick, but also if you're actually doing a, like a business card, it's, you know, you would not need something thicker than that for a business card. That would be ridiculous. Um, just keep that in mind in case you are doing um, something uh, else later. Um, you can't really, so someone, I guess Martha asked if you can cut metal. Um, yes, you can, but it really depends on the metal because there's only specific material types um, with metal that can go into the Glowforge. Again, it would need to be less than a fourth of an inch, which is kind of odd. Um, but honestly, I would say etching is a better option for metal or things of that nature. Like you saw earlier with my coworker and his laptop and how we etched into the top of the MacBook, like that kind of thing. Um, that's a little bit uh, safer. So even though you can only cut um, a fourth of an inch or less, you can etch on almost anything. Again, it really does depend on the material. Um, I have to kind of go through and check and make sure. So if you brought in some sort of weird metal alloy, I would need to know exactly what type of metal it is before putting it in the machine. Um, but again, wood, acrylic, those are very safe uh, materials. You can etch and cut pretty much on any of those types of materials. Um, yes, you can do the metal, but again, I would have to be able to confirm that that type of metal could be in the Glowforge before we could actually get it cut, it, get it cut or etched. Um, and that's just, that's safety for you and it's safety for me um, because laser cutters are awesome, but they do have the capacity to start fires. Um, I have not luckily seen one yet, knock on wood. Um, but I think that uh, I know that that has happened, you know, in other people's, you know, experiences. So if you put in a metal that maybe is not supposed to be in there, it could cause some sort of, um, you know, not explosion, but mess. So yes, you can do metal. It just depends on which one it is. Uh, but again, you can set up an appointment with me. You can go into the makerspace um, and then we will check the files that you give us. So again, if you want to do cutting, cutting and etching, you need those two files. If you just want to cut something and you, you only need a cut file, that's fine too. Like no problem. Same with etching. Doesn't matter. Um, you just have to kind of know what you're, what you're wanting to do. Um, we'll check to make sure the files are good and then we'll get cutting. And typically laser cutters don't take all that long um, to, unless it's a very complicated etching or something like that, or like really, really small cuts. So if you're doing like a filigree type design um, on the cutter, then it might be a little bit more complicated. Um, but other than that, uh, that was kind of a brief overview. Um, and if you have any questions, please feel free to email me. So are there any questions like right now that I can answer? No, nope. you'll check on how to send both of these recordings, right? Yes, I'll have them. Um, I, I will have them done in Zoom. I, I already have the other one completed and everything. I just am going to talk with um, some people in the library to see how we want to disperse them, uh, the best, most efficient way to kind of get them out to everyone. Okay. So, I don't have time right now. I'm still grading, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, there's, there's, um, there's no rush, <laughs> as you can tell, <laughs> in, these, in these times. But thank, thank you. It was so great for attending. Thank yeah. you. It was great. Thanks. Great. Thank you. Thanks a bunch. You're welcome. It. Thanks for coming. Yeah. Thank you, Hannah. You're welcome. Again, if you guys have any other questions, please feel free to email me. I know this was a very, you know, sure. surface level. Sure overview to what you can do so if you have more specific interests uh, a more specific project um, feel free to get in touch with me and we can work it out all right well thank you guys so much i know we're over three o'clock by a bit so i appreciate you guys coming out and i hope you guys have a great rest of your day it's a thing that we um, made um last time we came oh that's awesome that looks so good so you have a 3D printer at your house? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, we got a cheapo $100 deal. It takes oh, forever. that's so cool. So did you design that? Each of these.
she was asking me a question. What? So did you design it? Mm-hmm. That looks great. That looks so I, great. Good job. Daddy actually got me um, Tinkercad, so I make my own designs now, too. Perfect. Well, Tinkercad is super easy, and it's for everybody, so I'm glad that uh, that you got to to do that and actually make something. That's so cool. Um, if you wouldn't mind taking a picture of it and sending it to me, I would love to put it on our Instagram. Is that okay? Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. We'll shoot you a, we'll shoot you a picture. All right. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Cool deal. Right. Let Talk me know if you guys have any other questions. Bye.